Welcome back, Physics 30. This is the last booklet in the Unit 1F uh, Newton's Law series. It pertains to pages 138 to 139 of the book, and it looks at Newton's third law. So we looked at the first law, uh, in motion, objects in motion stay in motion unless an outside force acts. Newton's second law, F net equals MA, mass times acceleration equals net force, and the last one here, Newton's third law. And then we'll look at examples, illustrations, and applications of it. So the third law is, and you've likely heard this, the action-reaction uh, statement. To be a little more clear, though, for every action force, there is an equal and opposite reaction force. <coughs> so an action force acts in a certain direction, and the reaction force acts in the opposite direction. Okay, so t forces tend to occur in pairs, and we'll take a look at examples dealing with that. And it's very um, easy to determine what those two forces are if you kind of follow this formula that I have on the next page. Just maybe highlight and, and draw the arrows that you see here. <coughs> so if we have two objects, objects A and B, if A exerts a forward force on B, then the reaction is just interchange those two around and make the force go in the opposite direction. Then B exerts a backward force back on A. <coughs> okay, so that is the format there. If A pushes B forward, B pushes A backwards. And we'll take a look at some examples dealing with that. And it'll, it'll, um, we'll nail that home, hopefully, those two forces. So a badminton racket hitting a birdie. So the two objects are the racket and the birdie. So the action, racket exerts a forward force on the birdie. Then if we interchange those two objects and make the force the opposite way, birdie exerts backward force on racket. Now you may be asking yourself, well, why doesn't the racket go flying backwards? Well, if you take a look here, comparatively speaking, the racket has a high mass compared to the birdie. <coughs> So the, the, the racket is much more massive. <coughs> and if you look at the formula F net equals A, sorry, F net equals MA, and solve for A, looking at the accelerations of the objects, the forces are the same, so F net and F net are equal. <coughs> but when we divide by the mass, a large mass for the racket versus a small mass for the birdie, and you know from math that the larger the denominator is, the smaller the number is that you'll get when the numerator numbers are identical. So we get a small acceleration, big acceleration. So of course we see what happens to the birdie more than we do the rocket because it's only a small acceleration backwards. Whereas the birdie experiences a large acceleration due to its smaller mass. Uh, rowing a boat. Now if you think about how you row a boat, you're actually pushing backwards on the water. So the paddle, because we have the paddle, and we have the water basically. Those are the two objects. <coughs> so a paddle exerts backward force on water and we, so we do that in hopes that we experience the reaction force. The water exerts a forward force back on the paddle and since you're attached to the paddle and, and you're attached to the boat, it's the boat that moves forward. Okay? Look at a few other ones. Shooting a gun, there's many action, reaction forces there, but we'll keep it simple. We'll just simply have it pertaining to the gun and the bullet. So of course there's an explosion inside there, etc. But we'll just simply look at these two objects. Gun pushes bullet forward. So gun exerts forward force on bullet, and then the reaction, bullet exerts backward force back on gun. And of course, if you've shot a gun, you feel that. You feel that reaction force of the gun being pushed backwards into your shoulder. And again here, if you look at F net equals MA and solving for A, the mass of the bullet is really, really small compared to the gun. So the acceleration of the bullet is big. It speeds up really quickly when it's going down the barrel of that gun, whereas the gun experiences a smaller acceleration. But we definitely feel that small acceleration with the recoil of the gun. apple falling to the ground. This is an interesting one. So if we just look at apple and earth, earth 
exerts downward force on apple. And here where it get, gets crazy. Apple exerts upward force on earth, believe it or not. All objects exert a force inwards towards themselves, being that gravity. And again, if we take a look here, the apple's mass is way, 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 way smaller than that of the earth. So the acceleration that the, herb, the apple actually exerts on the earth is really, really small. Virtually undetectable because you have to think about there's apples falling everywhere on the earth and everything balances out. So really small, whereas the apple, small mass, experiences a large acceleration. Last one here, I think. Uh, pushing against the wall while wearing skates. It's like one of the first things you did when you were a kid and put on skates. You push forward on wall, <coughs> and the wall, yes, the wall pushes back on you, and you go, since you've, you've kind of gotten rid of the action-reaction force of your foot on the ground by wearing skates or a skateboard, accelerating backwards will actually cause you to move backwards because you're minimizing the friction between your feet and the ground, so you experience the wall pushing back on you. It's not that you're pushing off on the wall, as people tend to think. It's that the wall is actually pushing back on you. Yes, an inanimate object pushing back. That's it. That's it for Newton's fourth law, action, reaction. And again, you can't go wrong if you follow this format here. A, exerting a forward force on B, and then interchanging that. Or, as you see with rowing a boat, this could be backward force, and this could be forward force. So just be careful when you're doing that. Okay? We'll see you again.